In this video I'm going to have a look at how we can disable a button when we use TKinter to develop a graphical user interface. A contact form, as you can see here, is something you would typically see in a piece of software that was running. And what this is for is to allow somebody to enter their name, their email, and to pass a comment, and then click a submit button. So if we look at this form here, a user of the software would typically write in here their first name, would write in here their last name, would type in their email address, and here they would place a comment and then they would click on the submit button. Now what I'm going to do in this video is not look at how we build up the entire form. I'm going to concentrate just on this submit button here. Now this is the program that I'm going to consider first of all. And you can see if we look to the first line, it says import TK enter as TK. Now there are a number of ways of importing TK enter, but this approach will stop naming conflicts occurring. Because if we look to this line, which is responsible for creating an instance of the window, you can see in this position that I've had to put TK full stop because here I've placed TK. So there's no risk of me having naming conflicts with any other modules that I might load in, modules that I myself may have written, for example, and I may have mistakenly put a name that clashes with the names that appear within TK Inter. But the very fact I have to put TK in front of things that I want to use in TK Inter stops naming conflicts occurring. And of course, I've got a video on naming conflicts earlier in this playlist. So you can see here I'm using this to create an instance of the window, but have a look in front of it and you can see I've had TK dot, and this is something that allows us to avoid, as I've already said, naming conflicts. Now when this program executes, what we're going to see is this here. We've got the runtime, we've got the window that this program gives us. If we come and look at this line, you can see that it's affecting the title of the window. And if we consider what the title is going to be because of this line, we can see here that I've got the string button demo. And consequently, what we will see here is button demo. Let's now consider this program statement and what it is going to do. It's going to set the size of the window using the method here, geometry. And you can see in the bracket, you've got 300 times 300. And what that's going to do, it's going to set the size of the window to a width of 300 and a height of 100. So we get this size, as you can see here. Now, once the window is up and running and visual, as you can see it in front of you, the program then goes on to this here, my window dot main loop. Now, what's happening now, we're in an event loop. And that means that the window that you can see in front of you, the runtime of this program, is waiting there for an event to occur. Now, there is not many events associated with this window, because as a programmer, I've not given it any yet. The only events that the window will respond to are the ones that I'm showing here. We can minimize, we can maximize, and we can shut the window down. Now, they come with this window by default. In other words, I wasn't responsible for coding those. If I click onto any of those, the appropriate actions will take place. So a lot of the work has been done for us here when we use graphical user interfaces using TK Inter. I know that I can have an event associated with each of these three and it will be the click event. So when I click on one of them, it might minimize if, if it's this one, it will maximize if it's this one and it will shut it down if I click on to this one. So there's code behind the scenes that will allow that to happen. It's just that I can't see it as the programmer, but I know it is there. So the code that you see in front of you produces the window that you see in front of you. What I'm going to do now is to introduce code that will place a button upon this window. And that can be seen in the next slide, as you can see here. Now the code I have added can be seen here. And if you look very carefully at it, you can see that there's this line of code and what this is going to do is to create an instance of the button and set up some of its properties some of its attributes and we can see here that i'm using tk 
dot button and what this is capable of doing is producing an instance of the button and of course that button will have to be associated with something and it's going to be associated with the window that I've already created so I place that here and of course this is my underscore window which I created on this line using this name as you can see if I now consider what I have here I'm setting the text property of the button to submit form and if you look carefully at the submit form you can see it is a string I can now go on to look at this which is another property that I'm going to be setting the font property of the button and you can see that I've put that as a string as bold 20 so it'll take up the system font, it'll make it bold, and it'll make it of size 20, which is quite big. So we have set up the button, and then we pack it. Now I would normally use grid if I was making a graphical user interface, but I'm just throwing it on the window anywhere here using the pack. Because this video is really about how we can disable buttons. So if we consider this button, which was created on this line, by setting the properties as you can see here and then we pack the button when the program you're looking at executes what we will expect to see is the following and if you look very carefully you can see that this line has packed the button in this position and if you look at the button you can see here it says submit form now the reason that says submit form is because here we set it to submit form what i would like you to do is to note here that the font is bold and 20 and if you look at the font you can see it's quite big and it is in its bold format of course once we consider the button placed upon the form and consider the computer program the next thing we know is going to execute is this here and what this will do is enter the program into the main loop and this is where we're now waiting for an event to occur and if you consider the window and look to this button what I can do as the user is click on that button but at the moment I can click on it to my heart's content and I'll see the button going in as I click on it but there is no code attached to it so the form will in no way respond to me clicking onto it because there's no code associated with it whereas there is code there if we consider these here the minimize the maximize and the shutting down of the form it's just that i can't see it i wasn't responsible for writing that code as the programmer that was given to us by default by tk inter but if i consider the button i've only placed it on the form i've not said look when this is clicked do the following and that's what the next slide is going to show us how can i get the form to respond to the fact that when i click on the button i want something to happen so what i'm going to do now i'm going to keep the code that you can see in front of you but i'm going to amend the program and the amendment i'm going to show on the next slide as you can see here and if you look to the amendment you can see i've added a function in this position and i've also added this here which is command assigned change underscore text let's consider this here and we can see it says command is assigned change underscore text now if you look very carefully at this you can see that that is the name here of this function and if we consider all of the function you can see it is here of course this creates the button and we've seen how we can tie the button to the function above and then naturally we pack the button so what we will see is this here if i now as the user come along to the button here and i click on it what i will find happening i will have a click event associated with the button in other words the button is designed to respond to a click event when the cursor is over it you click on the mouse and it will respond to a click event that i'm going to show with this bolt of lightning here just as an illustration now when that occurs what we're saying is an event has occurred and that button says well i've been clicked what should i do next well the very fact that this here 
is saying that the command associated with the button is change underscore text. It is saying that what needs to be executed is this function. So this function is associated with the button that's on the form. And of course, if we consider this function, we can see here that this is the line of code. Now look carefully at that line of code and you can see that it's going to be altering the text property of my button and it's going to be altering it to form submitted. So now what I'd like you to do is to keep your eye on this button here because what will happen at runtime is this name submit form will be altered as you can see there to form submitted. So here where we've got form submitted now appearing on the button, it's there because if we look here, we can see that this string appears on this line and we alter the text property of my underscore button. And of course, this line appears within this function. And this function is the one that is executed because of this line of code here that we placed as one of the properties when we created the button and we set the command to change underscore text, which is this here. And we can see that that is the same name as this function here. One of the things I would like to point out, however, is when we define the function, you can see here we put brackets but I would want you not to get into the habit of, because you put brackets here, say to yourself, ah, well, follow the arrow for a moment, is to put the brackets here. You don't. You just put change underscore text. If you were to put the brackets here, Python would think you were trying to call the function change underscore text. It would regard that as you trying to invoke the function change underscore text. You're not ensuring you haven't got the brackets here, now ties the button to the function. More precisely, it ties the click event of the button to the function. So be careful not to put brackets where the arrow is pointing. You have to, however, put the brackets when you're defining the function. Let's now turn our attention to the user clicking on the form. So here you can see the form with the cursor hovering above the button and let's say the user now clicks on it and of course that's going to fire an event that I like to show with this uh, lightning bolt here. So what will happen? Well, what will happen is that this function will execute again and this form submitted will be sent to the button here. But it was already form submitted. That's correct, it was. But it's been changed to form submitted. In other words, we don't see that happening, but that's what the code has done. It has sent to the button again, form submitted. So that code will execute. And every time you click on this button now, it will overwrite form submitted with form submitted. So to us as the user of the program, we can't see that happening. But make no doubt about it, the code is doing that. Of course, when you design a graphical user interface, you have to give some thought to what the user is likely to do. The user is likely to click on form submitted more than once. Wouldn't be a sensible thing for them to do, but you're giving them the option of doing that. And remember, this is a button that should be associated with the form that we saw at the beginning of this video. So what you could do is when they click on form submitted, you can move them away from the form and send them a user-friendly message which says, thank you, you've submitted the form. Or you can disable this button, which is really what this video is about, showing how buttons can be disabled. And of course, once it's disabled, the user can come along and try and click on the button, but nothing will happen because it's been disabled and then you won't get code unnecessarily executing. So the program we're looking at, we can see has resulted in the button having its text changed to form submitted. But I want to do something else as well as that. I want to, once the button's been clicked on the once, disable the button. And you can see that appearing on the next line. This is the program with the slight amendment. And the amendment is shown on this line. And you can see it's referring to the button, my button. And here you can see, let's refer to the state of the button. And here you can see we're setting that to disabled. 
which will disable the button, meaning the user won't be able to click on it again and get it to execute the change underscore text function. Okay, let's have a look what happens when this computer program executes. Well, the first thing we're going to see is this here. We're going to see the window, and within the window we're going to have the button, which currently says Submit Form. If I now move the cursor above the button, and I click on it, which I'm going to illustrate with this bolt of lightning here, what's going to happen? Well, because of this line of text, the button is tied to the change underscore text function, which is this here, and we can see within that there are these two lines of code. This line of code will change the text property to form submitted, which we've already seen in this video. But now we have this, and what this is going to do, it's going to change the state of the button to disabled. So these two lines will execute, and when those two lines execute, what we will see on the runtime is this. It'll say form submitted, as we would expect, because we've changed the text property, and the button is disabled. And if you look very carefully at the words form submitted, you can see they're still the same size, they're still bold, but look at their colour. They're greyed out. They were black a moment ago when we had the previous program without the disabling of the state. The form submitted was black, but now you can see it's grey because we've now disabled the button. Now I'm going to consider both of the functions we've looked at in this video side by side. So if we look to the first one, you can see what this did was just change the text property to form submitted. And that's the look we got when the user clicked on the button. It changed to form submitted and have a look at the size, the boldness of the font and the fact that it's black. And here you can see I've added the extra line which will disable the state of the button and you can see we get this as the runtime. Now I'll put the runtime side by side as you can see here and it's clear that the one on the left form submitted is black whereas the one on the right you can see form submitted is greyed out. And you can click on the one that's greyed out till your heart's content and it will not fire the event associated with the button. Now something for you to bear in mind, it will be the case at some point in time when you're writing your code, you want the button enabled so you can click on it again, but that's for another video. Here we've looked at how we can actually disable the button. It doesn't take much imagination to realise if you want to enable it, you change the state to enabled, but I'll leave that for you to consider in the meantime. It might be worth you considering having a go at producing a form similar to this where you have it labelled up as you can see here. Allow the user to enter their first and second name, their email and some kind of comment and have a submit button that you disable once click but also have that submit button send the information entered by the user to a label so you can see what they actually entered was correct. So. It could put in a label, for example, their first name, the second name, follow on a separate line by their email, followed by the comment that they would put on. You could further the exercise by actually putting another button on that would reset the form, allowing you to resubmit using the submit button. And you could do that with a reset button. So it would reset the graphical user interface to allow for something else to enter their information and then click on that submit button again and see if it outputted the new information entered by the user to the label that I recommend that you add to this form. Now clearly it's just an exercise but um, it would be a useful one for you to do because everything you see on this form I've covered in the TK into playlist now so if you followed everything you should have no difficulty developing the form that you see in front of you. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.